We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and every Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Rev. Troy Roland for Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways for you to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. Service will begin soon.
give God a praise in this place on this morning. Oh, hallelujah on this Palm Sunday. Let's give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. We're going to take it back a little bit on this morning. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we just ask you to clap your hands with us as we begin to magnify the name of our God. For he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is greatly to be praised. Come on, y'all. church say amen. Let the church say amen again. If we'll stand to our feet, on the next day much people were come to the feast. And when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. 
because this is the day that he made and we ought to be glad in it. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you, thanking you for the many blessings that you have given us. Now, God, as we continue our worship service, continue to be with us, continue to lift us up as we come to you in truth and in spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of the children of God said amen. We welcome you this morning to Agape Fellowship, where love is what we do. We are a Bible-believing church under the Missionary Baptist Church. We are committed, we are committed to exalting the Savior, exposit the Scripture, equip that by the saints, embrace the Spirit, and evangelize the sinner. Welcome to Agape Fellowship as we sing along with our praise team. Welcome to Agape Fellowship. to Easter Sunday. We thank God for your presence here today. Before we go any further, we have to have prayer. It is prayer time now, that time that we take out and we talk to God. We talk to God about all of our experiences, all of our problems, all of our successes, all of our blessings, and we give him thanks for what he's continuing to do for us right here at Agape Fellowship in each of your lives. We thank God for God. We're now going to have prayer by Reverend Tanika Williams. Amen. Good morning, Agape. Hallelujah. Desmond, give me something that's not depressing. <laughs> Usher in the spirit of the Lord on this morning. Because if your week has been anything like my week, where... The doctor said this, and they said that, where this report came and that report came, and there is death, pain, and all manner of evil surrounding you and trying to attack you and your family. If that's you on today, I need you to get ready to come to the altar because enough of the pity cat and the tradition and what seems right because we're battling something that's different. We've been in battle, but we're battling something that's playing for keeps for our soul. Not just a, a virus that ravished our finances and our health and our well-being for the past two years where we don't even see church attendance like it used to be. Even viewership is going down as people are turning their backs on the church and the Lord. 
because they're consumed with other things, not just a community that is ravished. Every time you turn on the news or the television, you see murder, violence, not just in a world where a person can wake up and say, I'm gonna take this country today and go and kill children, women, civilians, blowing up hospitals and shelters, and he's still breathing. But the people of the Lord, what are we doing? Whose report are we going to believe on this day? We're still surrounded by all manner of evil. And it's time out for the, the foolishness that we have a tendency to get wrapped up in, the petty things, the way we come in just traditionally and have, you know, just like what we always do. It's time to be real in the house of the Lord. Our communities need us. Our families need us. The people need something different. So let us go before the throne of grace on this morning and let's petition the heavens. And if the Holy Spirit falls on you, don't worry about the cameras. Don't worry about people. what people might say. Let it go. Because we need to petition heaven on this morning like never before. We need to shake the heavens as God shakes the earth. And we take back the keys of hell and the things that have tried to come upon us in our homes, in our families, in our churches, in our schools, in our communities. Because the enemy is playing for you. So let us pray now. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you, God, for waking us up on this side of heaven this morning because it gives us one more chance, one more opportunity to make a difference, Lord, in the world that we live in, whether it's a smile or a contribution, whether it's a sacrifice, whether it's a prayer or a spoken word. We thank you, God, and we give it to the people that you have placed in our path, God. We give it without grudge. We give it with joy because you love a cheerful giver. We give love on today. The church is called agape, which is unconditional, pure, godly love, the ultimate love. And it is our prayer that as members tied to this body or even those who are visitors that are tied to this body, employees are, tie, are tied to this body, whatever your function is with this body, that as you go out into the world, people can witness that love. Because you may be the only love or Christ that they see. So God, we thank you on today that you gave us this day to be able to maximize our spiritual ability. To be able to give us the encounter to make a difference in the lives of others, God. We thank you, God, that you chose us, that you saw fit to bless us with choice. Because you first loved and chose us when we didn't even know who we were. You looked into our mother's womb and you shaped us. You formed us. You knew us when we didn't even know to know, when we didn't even have a brain. So we thank you, God. We bless you. And ask that you forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us, God, for our sins and our iniquities, our transgressions, our backbiting, our gossiping, our lying, our cheating, our stealing, our adultery, our fornication, our cursing, our unforgiveness, our doubt, our meanness, our rudeness, our vindictiveness, our hatred, our resentment, the evil things that we've spoken, our blasphemy, our misrepresentation of you in any way. Whatever it is that we've done, we ask God that you 
forgive us now and accept us and our prayers, God, as we petition you on today, God, that you will shake us again, shake us to our very core and our spirits, God, to be able to lift holy hands on this Palm Sunday and every day, to glorify you, to lift you up, to say thank you, God, to worship you, to find our purpose and our destiny. To know that no matter what man said, no matter what the lawyer said, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what the government said, no matter what the boss man said, no matter what the boss woman said, no matter what the preacher said, no matter what the teacher said, no matter what the principal said, no matter what the man standing out directing traffic said, that nothing that you don't ordain for our lives can be. So we thank you, God, that you've sanctified us, that you've purified us, that you've set us apart, that you've given us purpose, that you've given us hope, that you've restored us, God. When all others have turned their backs on us, God. When all others have given up on us, that we can turn to you, our Savior, our healer, our redeemer, our creator, our provider are everything, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. El Elyon, the highest of God. Woo! A God of peace, Jehovah Shalom. Woo! A God of healing, Jehovah Rapha. God, heal me. Heal our land. Heal our community. Heal our world. Heal our nation, God. As we lift you up, God. Touch everyone, God over the world, that they will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they will bow knees and bow hearts and bow minds and surrender to your way, God, and look for your faith and your word, that there will be peace, that there will be healing, that there will be restoration, that there will be purification, that we can rebuild our land in a way that is pleasing unto you, God. In the name of Jesus, we recognize that we're in the end times. We see all the signs. We see wars and rumors of wars. We see issues with our environment. You don't know fall from spring. One day it's hot, the next day it's cold. We understand that, God. But it's all under your will. It's all under your care. So we surrender to you, God. We bless you on today, God. Touch this service. Touch the man of God, the first family. Touch everything that is surrounded in this community. We lift up hope meals onto you today, God. We lift up. our problems and our situations, every stronghold in our individual lives, regardless of what we walk into when we walk out of this door, we will lift you up as our Savior. We will lift you up as our God. And we will look for you in all things and look for the opportunity to be a blessing to all people. All people. We thank you, God. We love you. We bless you on today. We bless you. And whatever they told you this week, whatever they're going to tell you next week, God is still God. He is still on the throne. He is still in the blessing business. He is still in the healing business. So give it to him with the expectation that he is able to do exceeding abundantly. I thank you, God. Whose report shall I believe on today? Whose report are we going to believe on today? Woo! The Lord's report. Hallelujah! It's a report of report. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, give him praise on today. Hallelujah! Not just a hand clap. Oh, maybe you're not going through anything. Maybe they didn't tell you no. Maybe they didn't tell you you have an
today now I hope that you don't love him today and just like they did over 2,000 years ago say crucify him but we love him today give the Lord a hand clap of praise amen to God be the glory just as was, just as was prayed today about our virus this uh, COVID-19 is still on the rise again. Please wear your mask. Make sure that you get vaccine, get the booster. And for those that are over 50 like me, uh, barely over 50, then uh, get that double booster that they currently have right now. But, Matt, but keep yourself safe. Keep yourself safely uh, during this time here. This is the month of the military child. We give, we salute military children, the things that they have to go through. And even today, today as we we honor the military child, we still have children that parents are deployed, are deployed in this unstable world that we live in. And so we pray for those families and pray for stability. We also this coming this coming up week, which is called Passion Week. Passion Week. We're going to be in service on Thursday and Friday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. On Monday, Thursday, we're going to have service right here at Agape Fellowship, and we're going to have the Reverend Carson from Restoration Missionary Baptist Church, who will deliver the message on Thursday, and then on Friday, Thursday, we're going to have communion as well. Then on Friday, we're going to go over to Restoration Missionary Baptist Church, and then the assistant pastor of this church, Reverend Williams, will give the message over at Restoration on Friday. So please, please take your time out. We're going to have it in person as well as virtual. So those in our virtual church, you can also see it on our virtual church as well as come in person. Uh, our very own, the Reverend Kenneth Brown, who is our mental health counselor right here in, in Fayetteville. And we thank God for people like him. Amen. Amen. He has a series, a mental health series, and we're just releasing the second part two part two of the mental health series if you please go online and see that series we're trying to show you and identify some of the things that are going on in this day and age you know we still got children in our school system children in our school system children in our school system who are committing suicide and they've been committing suicide because they're depressed there have never been a time like this here where children had to stay inside all the time so we ask that you tune in and look at those mental health series that reverend kenneth brown is doing we thank god for you here today we have several ministries that go on during the week we have our bible study on tuesday at six o'clock our bible study panel you can come in the sanctuary if you like or you could see us online we have our sunday school our sunday school which i always say our reverend uh, 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 Troy Roland, he's faithful every Sunday doing Sunday school. And Thursday, we're also going to pick up our women's ministry again with Reverend Tanika Williams on Thursday. We thank God for each and every one of you on this Palm Sunday. Now, there are ways to giving into this ministry. Deacon D's, if you'll go around with the uh, those that want to give inside the sanctuary or those that are going to give online. Three ways that we have to give in, uh, into this ministry. We got PayPal, Cash App, and then you can mail your gifts right into the church as Deacon D's goes around. We received a notice from all the way from Amityville, New York. Amityville, New York. From the Dixons. The Dixons have sent a check here in honor of their nephew, their nephew, Deacon Dees. And so we have a check from them to give into the church. They want to sow into this ministry. We get, we get checks from all over the country, and we just thank God for what God is continuing to do right here in Hope Mills, North Carolina. As soon as we finish our offering, we have a guest that's here with today. He's no stranger, and I want to make sure that you know that he's no stranger. This is not the first time he's been here because he's come through even when he's not campaigning. Amen. Amen. I want to make I want to make sure that you understand that he comes through even when he's not campaigning. Kirk Debbie was going to come after we finish our offering, and he's going to give some words. Amen. Hey man, if we'll stand to our feet. Come on, Deacon Deeds. Let us pray.
crowds offer you their coats to walk on, Heavenly Father. They wave palm branches, honoring your presence. Today we honor you, Lord, with our faithful tithes and offerings. As we lay these gifts before you, humbly, as tokens of our love. A public display of affection for you, our King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you for this day. We offer up this tithe to the blessing of you, Heavenly Father. For those that gave and those that wanted to give, just couldn't, Lord. I ask that you just continue to bless and let it come back tenfold to this household. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. Come on up, Kurt. A friend. hesitant to get up there behind that past behind that pulpit uh, that's reserved for reserved for him and others um, I, I just wanted to uh, bring a bring a couple words this morning it's great to be with you and first Reverend Williams I, I don't know about y'all but I needed that prayer this morning I mean I, I'm, come on y'all did y'all need that prayer I mean this has been this last month has been has been pretty challenging for me and just that message and that prayer just spoke to me. So thank you for bringing that passionate prayer. I felt like it was directly through me and to the Lord. So thank you so much. Patrick Camps, it's always, it's always good to be in your house uh, and, and be here and worship with each of you. You know, y'all, it's been a rough two years. Um, it's great to be able to be back in service and see people face to face. I mean, it's one thing to hear a prayer virtually, but it's another thing to feel it when you're in the when you're in the sanctuary so it's good to be back with you uh as pastor camp says it, it uh, it's good to be back with you i've been with you before i'll continue to be with you uh, i bring greetings from the 19th senatorial district i am state senator kirk devier it's great to be with you and i said these last few years have been challenging um, with covid and just everything that we've gone through financially businesses hurting people hurting sickness um, and what I've tried to do for you is deliver back to you uh, as your senator and find that help that I could bring back from Raleigh and from the, from the state senate for you and the resources that were there. And we've tried to do that. It is election season, um, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to worship with you and to, and to hear the word from my friend Pastor Camps. But I do want you to remember that when you do go to the polls, um, I ask that you just judge me and remember the works that I've done. And let them speak to you when you cast your ballot. And we fought to make sure that you can cast your ballot and it, that it's not suppressed. So I ask when you go to the polls, either early voting on April 28th or May 17th for Election Day, that you judge me on my works because I believe they will speak for themselves. And I will continue to fight for you and I will continue to deliver for you. So it's great to be with you today. I look forward to a message and I look forward to feeling it in my heart. And in, in, in my knees, as it brings me to my knees, because I need it today. I don't know about y'all, but for me, it's been a rough month. Um, and so I look forward to the word we're going to get today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Camps. Amen. Thank you, uh, Kurt, for those words. And we thank you for your friendship of coming through right here at Agape Fellowship. As Reverend Roland, as he prepares to read the word today, uh, I do want us to understand today is Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. I want us all to stand to our feet. The Bible declares that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, that everyone was cheering and the guys that were with him, guys and girls and children that were with him, they had their palm trees. And as he came in, they took the palm and they put the palms on the floor for him to walk. That was a sign of honor. They took their coats and put their coats down. What you see right here at the altar, you see a palm tree, just like what they have there back in the day. Today, we're going to ask that if you come around, I want you to come around and I want y'all to take some, a palm off the tree and go back to your seat as he's playing Hosanna, Hosanna. Start right on over here if you come from the back come on around come to the palm tree take your palm off for palm sunday
they were waving their palms. Now we have some more palms on here. When you leave, when you leave today, if you want to come up and get some more palms to take with you, please do so. Reverend Roland, if you'll come and read the word of God for today. Good morning, saints. Uh, the word of God. Today we are reading from the book of Matthew and Isaiah. The books of Matthew and Isaiah. Matthew will be reading chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And Isaiah will be reading chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. I'll read the book of Matthew first. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And the word of God says, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them. And he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what the prophet spoke in, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They bought the donkey and the colt and put on their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who's this? And the crowd says, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. All right. In Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9, the word of God says, The Lord God has given me the tongues of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I should not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. <laughs> the word of God for the people of God. May you all be blessed.
come on, come on. Let's give God a praise on this morning. Amen. Oh, come on. I need you to stand. If you're in the sanctuary, just stand on your feet with us this morning. And just begin to clap your hands as we bless the name of the Most High God. Jesus. <laughs> He's all right. He's all right. That was ready your hearing this morning out of the book of Matthew, that 21st verse. And we're going to go right down to the 10th verse. And it says, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. All the city was moved saying, who is this? Can you imagine Jesus coming into the city and they were all moved, who is this? And then a crowd, the multitude, had said that this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come now thanking you, Lord, take me out of this and let the words that come from my mouth be of thee. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is this? For the next few moments, we're going to talk about love on the march. Love on the march. For some of you know that my background for 23 years was in the military. Did basic training and did all kinds of things in basic training. And then when we look at this particular text here, we, we look at in terms of a military setting and marching in the military was done for a variety of reasons. It can be to get a platoon from one location, a squad from one place to another, or marching can be done to show off the mastery of skills. It was in boot camp, it was in basic training where we would practice the entire time to have one opportunity to compete against the other platoons to see who had mastered all the different moves that they had learned up until this point. You can march, you can march with a bit of pomp and pageantry like a parade. And my brothers and sisters, I believe that everybody like a parade every now and then. Similarly, you can march to show authority, like when a general, a Roman general, would, would return from battle with a victory, a triumph or a victory parade followed by the major military victories of ancient Rome. The successful general drove through the streets of the Temple of, Ju of, of Jupiter on the Capitoline Hill. Behind streamed his enthusiastic soldiers, you know, those soldiers that were shout and, and proud of what they've done. And in front of them would have the glamorous uh, prisoners as well as the entire loot that they had captured from the enemy ship and precious statues to plants and animals from the victories that they have conquered. Occasionally, this display was so much, it lasted for two and three days. The triumph was a religious ritual, a visual spectacle, and a sheer good time. And when Jesus was marching into Jerusalem, he did it differently than any of those that I just mentioned. And since he was marching or since he rode into a town with total humility to show them that pride in life is in full view of God. And he does not desire his people to live in such a way. If pride was the way that Jesus wanted, then what he would do is he would ride in a, on a white horse with gold bridles and with a custom saddle. He would be deemed it necessary to enter into the city by trumpet sounds and a choir singing. But no, div divinity is not established in such a way. His matter of entering into Zion fulfilled the prophecy in Zechariah 9 and 9, where it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a coat, a foil of a donkey. Yes, my brothers and sisters, today enter into the city a humble one. It enters into the city someone that God had sent, but it was just as triumphant one, yes, even more than a victory parade that was offered to the Roman generals after a battle had been won. Did not Jesus win? Did Jesus triumph over worldly grandeur? Did, did he conquer affluent with poverty? And did he conquer rage and malice? We're using meekness and gentleness. And my brothers and sisters, the answer is yes. And so he enters into the city full, full of kindness, full of meekness, full of, of compassion and, and passion, and he comes to deliver himself into their hands. The Bible declares that the king enters into the city to be murdered by his subjects and make the death a ransom. Before, but before he enters into the city, the crowd was yelling. They began to yell, and they said, Hosanna! 
hallelujah, to the honored Jesus. And they, they went through, and they threw their coats down on the ground and acknowledged Jesus as the king. And I find it hard to grasp this, that and, and acknowledge coming into Palm Sunday, how they yell, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. And just a few days later, they were yelling, crucify him, but that's Passion Week. That's, that's Passion Week. Uh, uh, placing their clothes on the ground was a time-honored tradition. It was a custom that they used when, when people, when they were found that God had appointed a man over their kingdom. When King Jehu sat at the captain's army and Elisha the prophet came to, by the order of God to anoint him king over Israel. And as soon as he came out of the inner chamber where the prophet had taken him, the people knew what had been done. They knew what had been done, and so they took their garments and they spread it under him. And with trumpet sounds and loud voices, the people cried out, Jehu is king. And as he stands, he rides on a coat. He rides on the coat, and then one man that had ever ridden, and, and it was a bit difficult to see the complete picture on how Christ rode into town. He did ride on a donkey or a coat. Well, what, which one is it? Why is there a distinction here? He did ride both. It is not a certain what exactly happened here, but there's different thoughts. But I, but I do know that in my opinion, it is symbolically the donkey tied up was an emblem or a picture of the Jews bound under the yoke of, of the law, and the coat was the one not written. It represents Gentiles who had not been under the law, having both represented on how Jesus and the Gentiles both are under the sepulcher of Christ's authority. Theologians fully understood the prophecy of the donkey coming from Zechariah 9, and that is referred to the Messiah. The Messiah. The rabbis had a pretty good story, a beautiful, a beautiful story about this donkey. The theme is seen from the beginning of the Bible. The donkey is the coat of the donkey symbolically in the sixth day of creation. The, 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 this is the donkey Abraham used to carry his son Isaac. This is the same donkey that Moses rode when he went into Egypt to free God's people. And this is the same donkey Jesus rode into Jerusalem to conquer death. And of course, we know it's not the exact same donkey, but it's a representation of what we see. There's a great language in the words that the people spoke as he rode by. They said, they cried out, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You, you've got to understand that word Hosanna in Hebrew means save now or save we beseech thee. And so by the words and by their actions, they acknowledge that Christ is the Savior. Don't, don't miss that by their words. They're saying that this is the Savior, the cry for deliverance from the oppression. Yes, they look at him. And do you see that Jesus, he could have grabbed his sovereignty right then without even going to the cross they recognize that he is the Savior. People were ready for the Messiah. They were ready, but it was on their terms and not God's terms. And, and so they wanted to revolt, and Christ wanted peace and a relationship forever. So they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna in the heights, meaning he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that meaning sure is for us. They said, let the heavenly host join with us in magnifying this August being. Y'all know what August means. You know, when we get up there, when we got a little education, we'll say this August gathering. And what we're saying is that this inspiring, this respected gathering, this reverence, this admiration, something of supreme dignity or grandeur, something majestic. And therefore, they had the palms in their hands. They had their palms and they began to wave their palms. And this is a direct revelation and comparison to the Feast of the Tabernacle. The palm branches were used over the roofs of the booths that they stayed during the feast. 
They would, they would also have the wave, the branches over the altar, and they were singing all the, these things. Hosanna cried out to the Lord for help from God. And they begged for this speedy and powerful one to come against all of their enemies. The Feast of the Tabernacle is called Sukkot. Uh, 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 get this, it's the season of rejoicing. It seems that the pieces fell right into place on this faithful day when Jesus rode right into town. And, he, and so he comes. He comes in through the gates of Jerusalem. The great anticipated king is coming. How long had they had to wait for this moment? For him to come, they had celebrated for 1,500 years in preparation for him this day. And now it is upon them. Freedom. Can't you hear them saying, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Freedom. Freedom over me. I love the scene. I love the scene from the movie of the Ten Commandments for those that might have seen it last night. In this scene, the people were crying out, for, for, for this long, for this whole life. They, they were crying out as they lined up on the boundaries of Egypt. And they were getting ready to come out. And Moses turned around and looked at them and he started with a few words as they began to move out. Uh, they wasn't crying for the mercy or life. But they were crying right now for freedom. They were crying because now they had been released from bondage. They had been released from slavery. Can't you see them? They're all moving out. The children are running around. You see all the animals as they're moving out to freedom. They're singing hallelujah because freedom is right there. But I would like to spend a few moments, just a few moments right now. We're going to come this to a close. But Jesus, he was openly aware and unafraid to go through this week. You've got to look at Palm Sunday. Jesus already knew what was ahead of him. He was ready to go. And so when you look at our text this morning, in Matthew and Isaiah, this is the servant song of Isaiah. Here he tells us the things of the suffering servant, that the suffering servant would have to endure. And at this point in the scriptures of Isaiah, they did not know who the servant would be, but that when the servant come, that he would have to suffer in hardship. Right there in verse five and six, it tells us of the pain and the anguish. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who pulled my beard. I did not hide my face from the insults and the spitting. When we come before this truth, that Jesus is the suffering servant and that he would suffer much, I have to continually ask myself, why did he have to do it like that? Why did he have to do it that way? Did my savior and Lord have to go through all of that? Couldn't it have been just another way? but I'm afraid I can never get it out loud out of my mouth because the Holy Spirit within me saying, no, there's no other way. There's no other way that if there would have been, I tell you, my Savior would have done it. Picturing the suffering servant. Can you picture him today if he had to? For Jesus knew that he would never enter the city again. Jesus knew that the next time he left, he would be carrying the world on his shoulder from the form of a cross. It, it did not because God is some kind of cosmic bully that this scene unfolds. It is because of his extreme faithfulness. No, it's more than that. It's a radical move. It's a self-denying faithful. How I many you know that Jesus was radical? The likes of humanity would not falter. So when this scene upon Sunday and in Passion Week was to come, the theme is and will it be that God is in everything 
every part of this world. God loves us. Everything in this world, God is a part of this. Every part of this world, God loves. God loves you and he loves me. God loves the thieves. God loves the adulterer. God loves the gambler. God loves the cheater. God loves those who scorn. God loves those who hate. God loves those, those that don't love him. He loves the idolatry. He loves the slanderer. He loves the philanthropist. He loves, he loves them who praise him with their lips, but kill them with their hands. If you do not see yourself in that crowd on Palm Sunday, a few months ago, I said that when they were marching, when they were marching to Jerusalem, it wasn't the dignified folk. It wasn't the folk that had everything. It was those that were single parents. It was those alcoholics. It was those who had sexual division. It was those that were going through something. It wasn't all perfect. But it was them who came in. And when they came in Jerusalem, Jesus had everybody with him. He had those that people had turned their nose up. The truth of the matter, he had me with him because I've never been a perfect person. But I thank God that he loves me. If you can't see yourself in what happened on Palm Sunday, if you can't see yourself at the Last Supper when Judas betrayed Jesus, neither will you see yourself in the night that the soldiers came to take him away. Neither will you see yourself the time when Peter cut off the ear, when he lied a growing false prophet. You will not see yourself on that Friday when they called him whether or not to release this man or release the rabbit. Probably not, but in all of that, Jesus sees you. He sees you and he loves you. And that's why we can walk with our outward show of love the love of fellow man. Enjoy today. Celebrate today. Today is a good day. When I think about what Christ did for me, all I can do is shout because God didn't have to do it. He walked. He marched. It was love. It was love that marched into Jerusalem. It was love who already knew what he was going to endure. It was love who kept on going. How many of us would have kept on going if we knew that we would be crucified? It was love. Christ lifted up high and edified. Somebody ought to praise him. Praise him for his love because it was love that lifted me. Love. Mark Storm into Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, love. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. It was love. It was love that took him to the cross. It was love that we allowed him. We allowed him in our life because it was love. Reverend Beckford, if you would come here and open the doors of the church, it was love. When we think about it today, when you look at this palm, you see, when I was a kid, we used to get the palms and my mother used to take it home. And she would either put it on a picture or put it on the mantle. And it would stay there all year as a reminder of Palm Sunday when he rode into Jerusalem that high holy place and the crowd that was behind him was just like you and I. Sunday, Hosanna. But a few days later, do we want to see ourselves in the crowd a few days later? So today, we celebrate Hosanna in the highest.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Love on the march. Love on the march. It was love. It was for love. And love was essentially uh, manifested before all our eyes. It was love. He did it for love. We do a lot of things right. We don't do a lot of things right. We get a lot of things right. We don't get a lot of things right. But God is right all the time. Amen? Amen. And it was love on the march. Before creation, God had us on his mind. He knew we were going to be in trouble. And he had a plan. Love on the march. And we're glad this afternoon that God had us on his mind. It might still be morning in some areas. <laughs> but we are glad today that God had us on his mind. And it was love that kept him there. It was love that kept Jesus when he finally went to the cross. It was love that kept him on the cross. He could have called 10,000 angels, somebody said, and destroyed the world and set him free. But it was love that kept him there. Love kept him on the march. Love kept him going from uh, Jerusalem to Bethany to Bedford G. Uh, love kept him on the march, on the move, because he was doing it for you and he was doing it for me. Love kept him there. Love made him do it. Amen? Amen. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church were never closed. They're always open. And they're open for all of us this afternoon. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, come to him today. There is no better day to come than today. Don't, don't get excited about tomorrow. We might not be here tomorrow. But we're here today. We have today. Come now. Come to Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. Amen. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, you can come. If you're concerned about your soul's salvation and where you spend your long eternity, you can come also. If, you have, if you're not sure, you can come. Be sure today because tomorrow is promised to no one. But we have today. We have today. We have today. I ask, this, I ask today that you pray. we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I ask that we pray for uh, those countries that are in proxy wars. I ask that we pray for what's going on over in the Ukraine. I ask that we pray for these people. We have to put ourselves in those people's shoes. Amen. And they are not alone. Let's support them in our prayers. Let's support them in our giving. Let's support them in whichever way we can. Because we believe in freedom. We believe in democracy. Let's do what we have to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Love on the march. Would you come today? Would you just march up to the altar and say, uh, there is one in the house that needs Jesus? The doors of the church are wide open. Amen. Amen. Jesus decided to do 
what we couldn't do. Jesus decided to do it. He had a made up mind. And he said, I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to do what I have to do for mankind. I'm going to do what I have to do for mankind. We couldn't do it. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Amen. Love on the march. Love on the march. When love is on the march, love can go the entire distance. Amen. All the way. All the way. If you're doing stuff and you don't have love, you might fear. You might stop. You might turn around. You might take another course. But love on the march is going to keep going because there's an objective. Amen. There's an objective in mind. And love is on the march to the objective. Amen. Amen. And the objective has a name. Steve, Stephen, Stefan, Stephanos, Smith, <laughs> Sarah, Sam. The objective has a name. Love on the march. Amen. Amen. Senator Kirk Devier will remain behind with uh, the leaders of the house so that we can partake in this picture. Uh, we pray that God continue to be with you, keep you, lead you as you guide us, Senator. Um, I don't know what people know, but do your research on some things and see what your representatives have done on all sides of the aisle. And just for clarification, he mentioned about election on in April. There is a primary Okay, so he is getting primary. So if you're a registered independent voter, you can choose if you vote, if you want a Republican, if there's a Republican primary, if you want a Republican ballot, or if you want a Democratic ballot. If you are a registered Democrat, you will check on the Democratic ballot, and you will see him listed with, I think, two other people, okay, that are running against him. So you have to vote in the primary for him to get into the actual election. Okay, and you have to think in that primary, can the person that I select beat the other person in the main election? That's what you need to think about. Who's gonna be able to beat that person in the main election if that's my choice, okay? So think about that in the primary before we even get to the election, you have to get to the primary and think about what our legislators have done for us, how in Fayetteville, in this budget that was passed in November 2021, Kurt Devier showed up. He showed up. He showed up. Okay? It's cheaper to go to Federal State than Federal Tech. Because Federal State's a primary school, is a primary school now. The Burkis and Rural Corridor is getting ready to get redone now. Museums are getting ready to come now. Money back in education and businesses is coming now. Because he thought about the community, not about party. Okay? So think about that. But you have to make your choice. I'm not endorsing one or the other. I know where my vote is. You have to vote how you're conscious and what you feel. But I want to make sure you were clear that there's a primary first. And then we get to the regular election, okay? Now, back to the business of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hands up, raise. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in love, infinite agape love, with each and every one of us as we part our ways and be a blessing to each and every person that comes in our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Go in love. Ministers, Roland, Egbert, William, Brown, um, Dees, did I come take this picture?
We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Reverend Troy Roland for Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. We will see you soon.